Hi, I'm Krista West of Avlia Folk Embroidery. And in this video, I want to show you how to cross stitch, how to do what's called counted thread work. Now, here I have an example of some counted thread work, and we're going to cover both counted thread cross stitches and outline stitches so that you have everything you need to know to do any one of my kits. But first, a little bit of terminology. This is counted thread work. It is a type of embroidery, but it is different from surface embroidery. This is surface embroidery right here, something where you have a design stamped on fabric and then you do different kinds of stitches and create an, um, an effect that way. I also have those on the website and there are tutorials on those, but I'm gonna set that aside because what we're focusing on right now is counted thread work. Now, for your counted thread work, you're going to need just a few simple tools. I recommend that when starting, you do start with a hoop. This is one of the Beechwood hoops that's on our website. You can also just use a plain six inch embroidery hoop. I find six inches is kind of the best overall size. It's really versatile. It's actually what I use for probably 99% of my stitching. I just work in a simple little Beechwood hoop. You're gonna want some kind of scissors, something pretty sharp that will cut embroidery floss. You're going to have a pattern of some kind, which we'll go over in just a second. It'll look like a little grid or a little graph. And then you're gonna want some way to kind of organize your floss. Now, the floss that comes with my kits is DMC six strand, 100% cotton embroidery floss. What that means is that each little, each little strand of floss is actually made up of six strands. We'll get to that in just a second. I find that just using, this is just actually an old wooden bracelet that I've actually owned for a really long time. My husband gave it to me a very long time ago. And this is what I do with my floss. So once I've actually taken my floss out of the packet and I've um, cut it into little lengths, I then just loop it. I'll show you how I do that. I just take and make a circle like this, whoop, like that. And I loop it around like that and I pull it through, and that just keeps all my floss really, really tidy. It's simple, um, it's not metal, so if you fly on a plane, it won't set off the metal detectors. It's just a really kind of low-tech way to store your floss. There's lots of different ways to store your floss. Now, moving in, we're gonna look at how to start. You're going to want to start, so once you've got all your gear together, you're going to actually start by taking your embroidery floss, and you are going to separate it into two strands. Most of my designs require two strands. Okay, so there's six little strands there, but you just want two of them. Okay, so you can see that. You're gonna pull out those two strands gently and slowly because it will not if you pull too fast. You're gonna pull that out like that, whoop, and you're gonna thread your needle. Do not put a knot at the end of your needle. We use knots at the end of our needle in surface embroidery, but we don't on counted thread. On counted thread, we're gonna loop it around because if, if you put a knot in there, it's gonna just pop through the fabric because the fabric is more of an open weave. Now, you've got your floss, your, your needle, ready to go with your floss. Oh, and then in case you're wondering, I, I usually pull it through and I leave a little bit of a tail. You can see there, like I have a tail that's probably two thirds of the whole length of the floss. Okay, just like that, okay? now. I'm gonna set that off to the side for a minute while I show us how to get oriented. You are going to want to position your embroidery here the amount that the pattern tells you. Most of my patterns are around two inches in from one from each corner. And what that means is two inches in from each side. So you'll notice on this fabric, you've got a selvage here, which is actually why I chose this piece. You wanna move not, not from this outer edge, but from the inside of the selvage, you're gonna start in about two inches here and then about two inches down, okay? So that's two inches in either direction. If the pattern says one and three quarters inches, well then you would go one and three quarters inches. If it says three inches, you'd go three inches in and, and down, each side and down. Now, if you want something really handy, you can get a ruler app for your phone and that way you have it with you all the time, which is super easy. Now, once I have this area marked, what I oftentimes do to start this is I'll just put a little piece of floss there to remind myself where to start the design. And I am going to hoop up, which means I'm going to take the piece of the hoop that's totally just wooden, has nothing metal on it, and I'm gonna put it behind the embroidery. 
And I like to position where I'm going to be embroidering in kind of the top section of my hoop here, kind of up in this area. I find that's what works best for me for not having a lot of hand fatigue. And then I'm going to position this. Now I'm going to be actually starting this row of pink stitches here, and I'll show you that in a minute. And I'm going to put my hoop over the top and just tighten down that screw. And then I'm going to just gently pull the fabric in to kind of create a level of tautness that I like. Now that's kind of individual for everybody. So you'll experiment with that. Now I have my piece hooped up, ready to go. I have my chart. Now this is where counted cross stitch or counted thread work differs from surface embroidery. In surface embroidery, I'll show you on this one, the design is actually stamped, you know, right here. And you're just following the design with certain stitches. But in counted thread work, you are using the fabric as a grid system to correspond to a gridded chart, okay? So what that means is that every two threads of the fabric in each direction, every two threads across, every two threads down, equal one little square on the chart. So you can see up here that there's a bunch of little blue squares and a bunch of little pink squares, and then you know the design starts down in here. And correspondingly, oh, here, you know what? I'll hoop up in that section so you can see what I'm talking about. In that section, then, you can see that I have a bunch of little blue squares and a bunch of little pink squares. And this is how I create the design. Now, I find this a lot of the charm of counted thread work is that it's so geometric and so regular. It has the effect of, say, really beautiful woven carpets or woven fabrics. There's a regularity to it that is very much part of the aesthetic of counted cross stitch. Now, if you've done some counted cross stitch before, you've probably encountered Aida cloth. Now, this is Aida cloth. And what Aida cloth is, is it's a type of cloth where all the little squares are right there for you. So convenient, okay? Really convenient, but not nearly as versatile as learning to stitch over two threads. Because if you learn to stitch over two threads, there is a world, amazing world of fabric out there, um, linens, cottons, silks, hand dyed. I mean, just so many options out there. And so that's why I want to encourage you to learn to work on counted thread fabric. For example, this fabric that I'm working on is called Archievito in Greek. We call it traditional ground cloth on the website. And it is a very uh, it's a reproduction of the historic fabric that was used like in the Greek islands for Greek work. And it just gives an entirely different feel to the embroidery. It gives it that lovely folk feel because the threads of the fabric and the texture of the fabric are lending an aesthetic element in addition to like the designs and the floss and all of that. So now that we've chatted about that, let's actually take some stitches here. So I'm going to actually start, I'm going to get up closer in just a minute. I'm going to bring my thread through. Now, I tend to like to work my charts from left to right, top to bottom, just as if I was reading a book. That's what I find more comfortable. Some people work it in the opposite fa fashion. They work it, let's see, right to left and bottom to top. It's really a matter of personal preference. Um, so just work it the way that's most comfortable for you. So I'm pulling up my thread like this, and I'm pulling through my floss, but don't pull it all the way through. There's my back, and I'm going to leave a tail of about an inch. And okay, this is the hardest part, so brace yourselves. You're gonna have to hold that little tail down while you take a stitch. You only have to do that for a few stitches, so it's really not that difficult, and then you'll be off to the races. Now, you can see here that this fabric is made up of these little threads, okay? I am going to count over one thread, two threads, and put my needle in. I am going to make the slant, the left slant of the cross stitch, okay? Now, because I'm gonna be working across and doing an entire row of this pink, I am gonna actually work another left slant, okay? Like this. Again, and I'm gonna go over, and you notice I came down two threads and came up. Now I'm gonna work over two threads, one, two. And then I'm gonna go in, okay? And now I'm going to come down two threads so that I'm continuing across the row working those little left slants of the cross stitch. 
Now I'm going to work a few of these to show you what I mean. Now, if I was just, you know, generally working on this, I would work this basically till about half, like not quite half my floss is gone. And then I would come back and I would cross all of these stitches. Okay. So, but the general rule of thumb again is a slanting stitch that goes over two threads. Now, every once in a while, you'll make a counting mistake. It's bound to happen. These threads are small and that's okay. You're going to have to unpick it, um, which means you're going to take out those stitches and get back to the spot, the spot where you are still aligned within the two threads up, two threads down, two threads in any given direction. And that's okay. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Actually, on this design, it happened to me. Ooh, where is it? See? Right here, I'm going to show you. See? Here I got off. You can see this little section. Now here, I decided to just let it lie and let it be a little imperfection. But here, I accidentally counted over three threads instead of two. So see, it does happen, even to the best of us. So I'm going to go like that. Awesome. Now I'm going to come back and cross those. Again, if I was working across the whole row, I would finish a whole lot more of these and do that. But for this purposes of this video, I'm going to just go back. Now, I came up, but instead of going over here and starting a new stitch, I'm going to go and cross that little X. I'm going to make the right slant stitch there. Okay, like that. You can see that. And now I'm going to take another one. And I'm going to make the next one. And I'm going to cross those X's. This part is really fun and easy because you're not really counting threads. You're just going from one point to another on your stitches. You're just going from the bottom part of this one, and then you're going to the top portion here. Okay, like that. Okay, and you're just connecting those. So cross stitches always move diagonally across the counted threads, okay? So you have all your threads going this way or this way. Your threads are going either um, vertically or horizontally, and your cross stitches are going diagonally. That's what creates the cross stitch. It sort of fills in that little square. Now, there is another type of stitch that you'll notice, and it's not used in all cross stitch designs. In fact, most cross stitch designs are just made up of cross stitch. That's it. That's all there is to it. But in Greek folk embroidery, there is a lot of use of outline stitches, and this design shows those. And I, I'm going to show you how to do that because it's really easy. Whereas in the cross stitch where, you know, the threads are going vertical or horizontal and we are diagonally making stitches with an outline stitch, we're now just using that same stitch, that, that slanted stitch that we went over two threads. And instead of going diagonally, we're going either horizontally or we're going vertically either way. So let's try that for a minute. And I'll show you how that works. Now, when you're all done with the end of a row, let's talk about ending off. That's a great idea. I'm going to come to the back and I'm just going to put my thread, my needle through like three or four or five stitches and I'm going to pull it through. Again, we can't use knots on counted thread work because they'll pop through this open weave fabric and then I'll snip it. I always leave a little bit of a tail. You can see my back isn't like super tidy. Like I don't really get too obsessive about that. I feel like embroidery is about the front. I mean, I could get obsessive about the back, but I don't know. I just kind of feel life is short and I don't really want to get obsessive about the back of my work. Now, I'm going to move over here and I'm going to show you how to do the outline stitches. Now, in this part, of, oh, and the other thing too, just a note about laying out your design as long as we're here. Now, you'll notice that I started working these and I worked all the, like the long row with the little diamonds. I worked, I'm, you can see it here, I'm working the brown line first and I'll work a number of those and then I'll go back when I have a number of them and I'll fill in the little golden diamonds that go in each one of those. I'll fill those in because that's creating a framework for me that's going to make it much easier to work these inside stitches and not have to be constantly counting too many threads and referring to the diagram. So, I'm working this one and I'll work another one. But to get over there though, I, I'm i lazy and I don't like to count any more than I have to. And so I'm gonna actually work the little outline stitches to get over to that next row of, of brown sort of diamond uh, outlining. So let me work that and show you how that works. So I'm put, moving my fat. Oh, the other thing too is when you're working, feel free to move the hoop wherever it's comfortable. Move it wherever it's comfy to like reach the part that you want. I actually had someone um, about a year ago email me and notice that I had done that in a video and it was like totally like changed his world because he didn't realize you could actually rotate the hoop. 
So you rotate the hoop however you want. And I think that's actually something with embroidery. Experiment and find the way that works best for you. Um, you might actually like working, you know, right in the middle of the hoop, or you might work like working down here. It really is very, there's a lot of personal preference involved. Now, I'm getting ready to work those outline stitches. I have my chart over here in case I need it, but I also have some of it already worked on here. So I'm going to just use this sort of as a chart that's already worked. And I know that I've got to go over two, I'm, I'm from right here, I have to start over two stitches to start these outline stitches. So I am going to count over one stitch and two stitches. Now, Outline stitches are a smidge trickier to hold the thread tail down, but I'm still doing that thing where I hold the thread tail down. They're a little harder to hold the thread, to, to, to secure the, the tail end of the floss, but I'll talk about that in just a second. So here I am and I've come up, I'm gonna go over two stitches, but this time I'm not going diagonally. I'm just going, what is this, horizontally, and I'm gonna put the needle in, okay? Then to get started, I'm gonna flip it over and just make sure that I've got that, that thread tail like held down. Let me see if I can show you that. I'm gonna hold that thread tail down. It's gonna be a little tricky, but again, you only have to do this on the first stitch. So it's not a big deal. And then I'm gonna go back and now I am gonna count out another two stitches and I'm gonna take another stitch going back in to the stitch where I was, where I ended the last stitch. Okay, does that make sense? Can you see that? There we go. Now. We're gonna do the next one because there's three little outline stitches on my pattern. And I'm gonna take that stitch like that, okay? Now, oh, here I am, there's a cross stitch. Oh, they're right in my way. So now I'm gonna come down two threads like that. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna make that cross stitch. Now this is just a little cross stitch here on its own. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and make the left slant and I'm gonna come and make the right slant too because I'm kind of traveling around the embroidery and I'm trying to get over here. And then I'm gonna come up and I see, oh, there's two more cross stitches right there. So I gotta work those guys. So now I'm gonna work those and I'm gonna count. These are slanting, they're cross stitches, so they're slanting. So here we go. There we go, awesome. And here we go, here's another one. Now on this one, Again, because I'm traveling my stitches, I would probably just come back here and let and work this one here. And actually on this one, it's kind of hard to see because there's a little bit of a imperfection in the fabric there, but there we go. And I would just float that little bit of, of um, floss on the back. I, I always allow enough floss in my kits so that you can float as needed because sometimes it just makes more sense to um, float the float the uh, floss rather than um, than do that than to um, you know crisscross everyone. Now there I got a little bit of a knot. I'm not going to deal with that right now because I'm just still we're still going over this. So I'm going to leave that there. Okay now, well wait no I'm not because it's going to give me trouble. Okay so I guess we're going to learn how to deal with the knot. So what I like to do with the knots is I pull them tight. Usually if you kind of pull into them, they'll release, which this one just did. There we go. So now we're back to stitching and we're gonna go like that. Okay, now we've got those two cross stitches and I've got one more little cross stitch that I'm working that's right here, this little one here. Okay. And then I'm back to those outline stitches. So now I'm gonna continue working those outline stitches. Oops, sorry, I keep moving the camera away. I'm still getting used to actually taping myself when I stitch. There we go. Okay, so we see how that works. You can see too that my, um, oh, and I'm counting there because it feels like I got, no, I did my two threads. You can see too how right now I've, I've lost a little tension in this and that's okay. If I'm working this and it feels like my fabric is just feeling a little too loose, I'll take a quick minute and I'll just kind of do that and I'll tighten it up a little bit, you know, give the, the screw of the hoop a little twist and do that. And there we go. And we're off to the races. Now I'll continue working this outline design all the way around the shape as it's shown on the pattern. And that's how you work the outline stitch. Now, figuring out on a counted thread pattern what direction you're gonna stitch and what order to take the stitches is actually part 
of what makes counted thread embroidery so good for your brain because you're having to plot and plan and strategize how to, you know, get from one section of the pattern to the other section of the pattern with the least amount of, say, traveling stitches or just in the, in the way that feels like it's the most comfortable and orderly for you to work. And so that's actually a really good part of cross stitch is that it's really, really good for your brain. So now here we go. I'm almost done with this little guy with this one little petal. And you'll see the little petal happen. Now, when I'm all done working this little petal, I'll go over and I'll finish the other side of the petal. And then I'll probably at that point, I would have it. Oops, there I missed a thread. There we go. See, so you can see what happens when you go over one thread. And I missed it there. There we go. So now I'm up over those two threads. Okay. Now I'm going to finish this off. Now, when I got done with this, if I kept following the design, let's see, here's the first one. The first little petal is what I'm referring to here. That petal is done. Now, I would go over here and I would finish this one. And I would do that. But that would actually put me back over and me and up here. And at that point, I may choose to just flip my hoop over and travel my thread over to this little point that I need to be to start the next, the next row of these. And that's okay. Um, again, I always allow plenty of floss to do that. And sometimes you just have to make that decision on the fly. Like, does it make more sense to travel the thread through the back of your work? Or does it make sense to... Um, you know, slip it through some of the back stitches, cut it off and start again. So there you go. Um, and that is how we work both cross stitches and outline stitches. And um, if you are new to Count and Thread, I would strongly recommend that at least the first week that you're working on it, you try and commit to a minimum of 30 minutes a day. If you commit 30 minutes a day, you will very quickly, usually within about a week, develop that rhythm of over two threads to the point where it's really automatic and it doesn't require tons of counting. That's where a lot of people get to with counted thread. And that's really where you're aiming to get to. Um, there's a whole host of wonderful designs and patterns out there. And I hope you have a really, really wonderful uh, time on your stitching journey. Thank you for joining me.